I've been very fortunate to be a member and more recently chairman of the Board of Governors of Harper Adams University during what has been a tremendous period of growth and development. We have seen our student and staff numbers grow and we have been investing in our campus to ensure that students and staff have the very best facilities to support their study and work in research and education for the agri-food chain and rural industries. For many years, the Agricultural College and later the University College hoped that an opportunity would arise to become recognised as a university. This opportunity came in 2012. By December that year, Her Majesty's Privy Council had conferred university title and Harper Adams University came into being. Chancellor. Well, can I firstly say um, that I'm really um, honoured and delighted to have been appointed as the first Chancellor of Harper Adams University. And I'm very touched because of the contacts I've had uh, over the past few years uh, that you should ask me to do this and fulfil uh, for you a, 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 a new post. And many congratulations on the achievement of university status, and one uh, well found and appropriately given. Considering that in the 110 years of your history already, things have changed so dramatically within this field of endeavor, and the assumptions made by what agriculture was completely different now. And that this uh, establishment has responded so well to those challenges, but has also maintained uh, some of those areas of uh, agricultural expertise that many others have forgotten about. You certainly major on the, the business element, and that's important, but your engineering uh, department, I think, is, goes against the grain a bit, um, but it recognizes that although agricultural engineering may be seen differently now, it's not in necessarily producing tractors, but it is producing a lot of other aspects, not least of all uh, the more, uh, the softer side of it, the software engineering that is uh, so different now from what it was before. But this establishment has understood the changes and has been at the forefront of building it in to the education of those who will work in the industry in the future. And it is and I always sometimes find the word industry is not wholly appropriate, but in terms of uh, this I th agriculture, I think it is. But it is much more varied and needs much uh, more input and more varied input than it ever has done in the past. And we need to understand where they go. The safety of the food chain, the <coughs> rural involvement, uh, are quite a challenge in this day and age. The internet has its advantages, but it also has its disadvantages from the rural communities. But for the rural communities, in terms of education, that should be a huge advantage, it should strengthen the communities to be able to manage the changes that come ahead. This university is in the best possible place to make sure that it understands what those challenges are and responds to it. This will be an exciting journey, and I'm delighted to have been asked to be part of it. And When in 1892 our founder Thomas Harper Adams left his estate to create a new agricultural college, he made clear his wish that it should provide practical and theoretical education for aspiring agriculturalists. That institution came into being in 1901 and over 110 years later, we stand true to the approach of our founder through the provision of industry placements by working closely with business and in the applied research on which we focus. It has been clear to us throughout our history that we have a role to play in supporting economic development 
as well as in education and research. Universities have been increasingly encouraged to contribute to society in this way, but we have simply seen it as a natural part of what we do. Similarly, our request for university title seemed to us to be a natural progression. After all, we held both taught and research degree awarding powers, had achieved outstanding results in assessments of the quality of our academic provision, and had developed a strong reputation for the type of higher education that we provide. But as you've just heard, it wasn't until December last year that university title could be granted and we could move on to appoint our first chancellor. We are, of course, very happy to be in this position and greatly honored, ma'am, that you have agreed to take on this role. So what are the next 100 years? Well, at least in the immediate period ahead, we have encouraging news that the government is investing in an agricultural technology strategy, that it has identified the agritech sector as one of eight great technologies with which the UK will drive economic growth, and that the government is taking seriously the issue of how we find people with the right talent and skills for our industry. The subjects in which we specialize are therefore being seen as increasingly important. But this is, I suggest, no time to rest on our laurels. We know that just as we face an unprecedented demand from industry for high quality people, and our average graduate employment rate for the last five years stands at over 96%, that we must do more to encourage young people to consider a career in our sector. My involvement was giving um, the posy of flowers to Royal Highness. Um, and I was the last, I was the exit. <laughs> um, I was a group leader, so I was involved in introducing a small team of people to Her Royal Highness, saying the names and what courses they were on. I think she knows quite a lot about the industry, and um, I know her hobbies are like um, sheep training, things like that, so she um, is it, it well into the industry and things, so I think it is a good marketing as well for her brothers. She's, she's really involved in it, obviously it's an interest of hers. Um, obviously she's opened up Princess Royal Halls and stuff, and, to hear her talking at the ceremony, and she knows a lot about it and she just seems very involved in the university and what we have to offer and do. The Chancellor has an honorary role representing the institution in the outside world and the Princess Royal is so strongly connected to the worlds of agri-food and related rural industries that I'm sure she will do splendidly on our behalf in that respect. Secondly, um, the, the uh, Chancellor is the person who traditionally would award degrees. Now, we don't expect that that will happen every year, but it would be nice at some stage to welcome Her Royal Highness back to the university so that she could then be present at one of our graduation ceremonies.